What's going on everybody? Thanks for tuning back in. Um, today I'm going to show you how to load a sound clip from, uh, from a file. So what I mean by that is if you have uh, certain sounds in your game or whatever it is that you're making and you want a specific WAV file to be loaded from a directory, so let's say inside your build directory you have uh, a sound directory like I do right here and you have a little WAV file inside of it and you want to load that uh, through code from file, you have to do it in a specific way. Normally for things inside Unity, uh, like game objects, uh, you can just load them using uh, resources.load or you could just load something as you can cast it directly. Uh, unfortunately, you can't do that with sound files. I'm not sure why, but I'm going to show you the workaround on how to load your sound through code. So the very first thing that you want to do is you want to save your scene. So I just saved it as local. I made a couple folders, scene scripts, and you're going to notice this folder and it's called streaming assets. Uh, I'll give you a basic description of what it is now, but go to the Unity documentation to understand it more fully. And I'll, I'll provide a link uh, inside the comment section or inside the uh, description. So what this is, uh, is a folder that Unity will always know the path to this folder. And this folder goes inside your build directory or inside your assets folder whenever you're um, configuring it inside Unity. Uh, what the streaming assets folder is, is basically the folder where you want to put everything uh, and it's not platform dependent. So if you want to load sound files, level files, save files, anything, it's good to store them inside directories inside a streaming assets folder. And I'll show you why, because it's really, really easy to access through code. So what we're going to do is we're going to, first we're going to create an empty game object. We're going to call it, uh, you just call it whatever you want, really. I'm going to call mine audio manager and I'm going to save that, save the scene. And what I'm going to do is scripts. I'm going to create a new script and we're going to call it audio call it whatever I'm just gonna call it audio controller for the sake of being simple so let's open up this script and code away so uh, I'm just using a little uh, Mario theme wave file for what I'm gonna be showing you guys but you can use this will work with any sound uh, as long as it's in the wave format it's the only format I've tested I know uh, mp3 is not supported through these means um, but a wave sound will work so uh, I have it located inside the sound folder I made inside streaming assets. So let's go back to our code. Let me just maximize this for you, make this a little bit bigger. Uh, don't need the update function. Uh, don't need the start function either. First thing I'm going to do is I'm gonna declare a couple variables here. Uh, just gonna call it audio stuff. I just like using headers to stay organized inside the editor. So we're gonna need a few things. Uh, in order to play an audio clip, you need an audio source in Unity. So if we just look here, we have our audio source, and we could just call that audio source. Um, same thing with our actual clip that we're going to be loading. Um, the audio clip is the actual sound file that we're going to be loading. So as I said before, I can't just set this equal to something. It doesn't work like that. Uh, you can't load it from file that way. You have to do it a very particular way. So we're going to call this audio clip. Hey, look, it named it for me automatically. And sorry, I have a public string and I'm going to call this the sound path. So there's one more variable that I want to put in. I'm just going to throw it up here and I'm going to call it a public constant string. And the reason why I'm setting the string is because uh, to a constant is because I don't ever want to change it. I always want my wave file to be called mario.wave. This will be whatever your wave file is called. Let me just double check that. Yeah, so this is my Mario wave sound. Okay, cool. So let's go back to Visual Studio. Okay, so the very first thing we're gonna do is we're going to make our awake function. This is obviously the awake function for a game object. Um, okay, so the very first thing we're going to want to do is, uh, you can do this one of two ways. If you want to throw an audio source onto your audio controller, you can do that. Uh, I personally, I'm just going to um, add one via code. So I'm going to do add component audio source because I just want to take care of any, everything in here. Okay, so now this is uh, one of the first things that we have to watch out for. So the next thing we want to do is we have to declare our sound path. Now, in Unity, um, 
what we're going to be doing is basically is we're going to be uh, using a class called www. It's uh, something where you can uh, you can use it to download objects off the internet, or you could reference local files with it. So the way to reference a local file is, uh, obviously it uses a string for the path, so we're going to create the string right now. So the very first thing you're going to do is you're going to type file. So no matter what, whenever you're loading from a local file like this, you're going to want to do it this way. Uh, now, this is where our streaming assets come in. So instead of finding the path actually on my computer, for example, C, program files, Unity, wherever your project is saved, you simply do application dot streaming assets path. So now this is a direct link to the streaming assets path, but remember that we're inside the sound folder. So we just have to add one more thing at the end and that's a forward slash because this does not include a forward slash at the end, our sound directory and another forward slash. And there you have our sound path, pretty simple. So in order to use the www request or the curl request or however, whatever you want to call it, uh, what we're going to do is uh, we're gonna need something called a coroutine. And what that is, is that it runs the process simultaneously with the rest of your code. Uh, because you don't want your code hanging, waiting to download this file. So logically they would want you to put this off to the side. So let's make our coroutine. And that is, we do this through the I enumerator class and we're gonna call it load music or I don't know, load audio. You can call this whatever you want. Again, it really doesn't matter. <clears throat> now, I'm going to leave this for a second here um, because we also have to actually make the request, which we need the www object. So I'm going to make an, one more class down here. I'm going to call it public www get audio from file. Pretty simple. So we're going to need two things here. We're going to need the string path and the string file name. Okay. So Let's do, let's do this get audio from file first because we need this to be complete to come up here. So what we're going to do is we're going to call a string audio uh, to load and we are going to format this. This is one way to construct a string using string format. If you haven't seen it before, this is how you do it. So we're going to use our path and then we're going to do plus. You can do this really any way you want. You don't have to do it the way I'm doing it, but Oops, sorry. So basically what this zero is, it represents, represents the first object uh, or the first string you have declared on the side here, and that's our file name. So you could really just do path plus file name. It really doesn't matter, but this is one way to do it with string format. Um, okay, so next I'm gonna make a www called, we're gonna call this request. And that is going to be a new www. And in case you haven't guessed it, this is going to be our audio to load. So we're making the request, or this is the request object, I should say. And we want to return that request. So basically what we're asking is say, hey, I want to get this audio from the file. This is the string path to the audio I want to load. Here's the object I need, and I'm going to return it right here. So. Before, if you've used uh, IE numerators, the one of the uh, most common uses is for it is for using something like this called the yield return new, and then wait for seconds. It's really, really good for pausing uh, between stuff, but we are going to be uh, returning that in case you haven't guessed. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to make an object called request again, and we're going to make this equal to get audio from file, and we're going to want our sound path, <clears throat> pardon me, and our, what did I call it up here? Our audio name. So this will return the object that we need. Then we're going to do a yield return request. So this right here uh, basically is gonna say, okay, this, uh, this thread on the side is gonna try and download this file or grab this file from file and it's gonna return it for us right here. So the next thing that we're gonna do is we're going to take our audio clip, which is called audio clip. And, or sorry, we're gonna do our request. And it has a very, very cool function here. Uh, let me grab that for you. Actually, no, uh, uh, I apologize. That is actually what I wanted to do. Sorry, so it's request. And then um, 
get audio clip. So obviously they knew that downloading files or loading from files, they would need to have some way to get the audio clip. This is how you do it. This is the meat of the code right here. So one more thing we can do, we can give this a name. You don't have to, but I'm gonna call it audio clip. Uh, and you could just name it. I'm just gonna give it the same name that, uh, that we're using up here. So I'm gonna save this. Okay, now the last thing that we're gonna wanna do is let's make one more class. Um, you could do it in here, but I'm just gonna separate it. And I'm gonna go play audio file. So very simple. We're gonna call this from here. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna have our audio source. We're gonna say, hey, um, we want our audio sources clip to be equal to our audio clip because they weren't formally linked before. And then we wanna say audio source. We want that to play. And another thing you can do when you're setting settings uh, through code is you can basically access any modifier that the audio source has. So we're gonna wanna take the loop or we're gonna wanna take loop, make it equal to true so it's always playing. Okay, cool. So we have our coroutine to request. We have our loading our object. We have turning our object into our audio file and we're playing our audio file. And just the last thing we have to do here is we have to um, call a function called start coroutine, which is what's going to load our uh, IE enumerator on the side. And that is how you call that. Very simple. So that should be everything that we need to load our audio from a file. So let's go back to Unity. Hopefully it doesn't spit a bunch of errors out at me. Uh, okay, looks like we're good to go. So if we take our audio manager here and we go to our scripts, we go to our audio controller. We're just gonna drag that right there. Um, that should be everything we need to do. I'm gonna hit play and hopefully the music starts playing. And there it is. Um, so let me just pause that for a sec. I don't know if you can hear the music or not, if my recording says it's right, but the music is playing. Um, we have the name of the auto clip right here. Uh, if you take a look at our audio stuff, the three variables that we had here, you'll see that um, Unity has, the streaming assets path has found its folder. So it knows exactly where to load the file from. Um, the wave is good, the loop is playing, and uh, play on awake is set to default, so that's why we don't have to set it through the code. So let me unpause the scene and just test it one more time. And yeah, everything looks good to go. Okay, cool. And there you have it. That is how you load uh, an audio file through code instead of actually putting it on the audio source. Uh, and specifying a specific audio clip. This is very useful if you're always changing audio files. Uh, if you wanna just throw all your audio files in a folder somewhere and you only have one audio source playing through it and switching to it, this is how basically you could take, <clears throat> pardon me, you could take this code right here. Um, you, could, you could take this code, turn it into some sort of loop, loop through all the audio files that you have, load them all in one time, and then you'd be good to go. Okay guys, thank you very much for tuning back in. We'll see you next time.